cognizant to the needs of our learners, parents, and teachers, the Department of Education provided us with powerful tools for productivity that will allow us to foster critical thinking skills, problem-solving skills, communication and collaboration skills to be compassionate, responsible global citizens. Join us and discover new ideas in our series of professional development training program with the ICTS at Tech Unit and Microsoft Education Philippines. Together, we will equip our learners and empower our fellow educators for a dynamic future. Para sa bata, para sa bayan, at para sa guro. Sulong Edukalidad! Magandang araw, Sir Wilbur po at your service. Narito ang itulay upang gabayan ka sa inyong pag-aaral upang lubos na maunawaan ang iba't ibang paksa o subject. Ang itulay ay isang free online tutorial class na pinangungunahan ng ICTS Educational Technology Unit sa pumumuno ni Undersecretary Alain Del P. Pasqua. Ang programang ito ay hindi lamang para sa mga bata, kundi ito rin ay magsisilbing gabay sa mga magulang at mga guro kung paano nila ituturo o gagabayan sa bawat asignatura ang kanilang mga anak o mga estudyante. Sa kasalukuyan, ang self-learning module mula sa regyon ng Calabarzon at kilala sa tawag na pivot ang ginagamit sa ating itulay online class. Kaya ano pang hinihintay ninyo? Ihanda na ang inyong mga ballpen o lapis, papel o kwaderno at samahan kaming itulay ang pagkatuto para sa bawat batang Pilipino. Sama-sama tayong magtutulungan para malampasan ang mga hamon sa panahong ito. Halina't matuto kasama ang inyong online tutor sa oras na ito. Hello, good afternoon, grade 3 learners from the Zombie Sayas and Mindanao. Ako si Tutor Gab at nandito na tayo ngayon sa week 8 ng ating tutorial. And I think this is the last day of our uh, time being together. And before anything else, gusto kong pasalamatan kayong lahat at i-congratulate ko kayo kasi grabe, you were able to reach this far at nakita ko lahat ng inyong hard work sa ating uh, weekly tutorial. Kaya, thank you so much, Grade 3 in advance. And because this is the last day of our uh, class, ako ay meron pa rin prepare sa inyong a little info or more uh, discussion about the last topic that we had. Okay, so let me share my screen to you. Are you ready? Okay, so let us begin. Okay, so last week, grade 3, we actually talked about the sun and the stars, right? At ngayon, we are going to learn more because for quarter 4, week 8, we're going to talk about everything you wanted to know about stars, okay? So are you ready? Okay, so because this is our last uh, session together, so let me just share to you first our goal or our uh, objective for this uh, session. At the end of this lesson, students are expected to learn more about stars. Okay? Ayan. At dahil nga ito na yung last day, you are going to hear me sing. So I'm going to teach you a nursery rhyme. No, It's actually related to our lesson. And I want you, grade 3, to to sing with me, okay? So I'm going to teach you, ayan, so ngayon I'm looking at the comment section. So nandito na si Jan Vincent, Santo Tomas, si Annie, si Yana, si Gingiva Bulatao, wow, grabe, same students who are very active na nakikita ko every week. And dito sila, sinaman nyo pa rin ako until the last day of our tutorial dito sa Science 3, okay? So si Jinji Well, sino pa yung mga nandito sa aking comment section? Ayan, si Jinji Well, si Annie, si Nadine. Ayan, so I'm looking at Nadine. Si Gabriel from San Agustin Elementary School, Quezon City. Si Yana, sino pa to? Si Christopher, si Samara, Sandigan de la Cruz. Good afternoon. Okay. 
Ayan. So, maraming maraming salamat sa inyong pagstay. So, let us begin. So, kasi the reason why I'm looking at your comment section, kasi I know some of you know already this song, Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star. Are you familiar with this song? Jen Vincent Santa Tomas? Are you familiar with this song? So, let me sing the song, Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star. Are you ready? Okay. So, here it goes. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. Up above the world so high, like a diamond in the sky. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. Okay? So yes, kumanda si sir. So I know marami sa inyo familiar sa song na to. Sige nga, itype nyo nga sa comment section kung sino talaga yung nung bata pa kayo, you were taught how to sing this song. Patingin nga. So sino sa inyo ang alam itong song na to? I know that, you know, many children today, nakakalimutan na tong Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, especially when you're your age, no? Nahiya na silang kumanta. Ayan. <laughs> Pero ngayon, me po, si Zamara Sandigan de la Cruz. Alam niya, ako po, sabi ni Yana. Sino pa to? Si Anne Fernandez. Alam din niya. Ian Joshua Fernandez. Ayan. Si Ian pala yun. Ginagamit niya lang si yung account ni Ma'am Anne Fernandez. Ayan. Si Christopher Elurim. Si Nadine. Si Mary Anandaya, si John Vincent, o oh, sige. Sabayan nyo ulit ako, isa pa. So kung talagang alam nyo tong song, let's sing together, okay? Pwede nyo i-video nyo yung sarili nyo na sabay-sabay tayong kumakanta, ha? Kasi last time na naman natin to na, you know, we are going to learn about Science 3. So I want you to sing and let us celebrate this day, okay? Ako po, tutor, sabi ni Annie Fernandez. Okay, let's sing together. Ready? Sing! Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. Up above the world so high, like a diamond in the sky. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. Yay! Very good, grade 3. I'm looking at Ryan Matthew for bar. Sabi niya, sir, ako din po, alam ko din po yan. Oh, very good. So, why do we need to sing this song? So, bakit kailangan natin tong kantahin? Kasi, di ba last week we talked about the sun, the stars, no? So, that's why I thought na paano ko kayo sisimulan yung lesson po ngayon? So, I remember this beautiful song and you know, the kids love this song, okay? So, Twinkle, Twinkle Little Star and how I wonder what you are. Ano ba talaga yung star? No? It's like a diamond in the sky. And we always think about stars. Okay? So ano ba siya? Paano siya nabubuo? No? Sige. So alamin natin. Ayan. So these luminous balls of gas helped ancient explorers navigate the seas and now help modern day scientists navigate the universe. O, oh, ba? So, akala nyo, basta star lang siya dun sa sky, pero stars pala really are very helpful, no? Kasi nakakatulong siya sa ating mga explorers, sa mga sailors, kapag sila ay nagnanavigate ng sea, no? Kung saan sila pupunta sa dagat. So, by simply looking at the stars, they know already where exactly they are, no? Kaya, these luminous balls we call stars are actually helpful in navigating the seas. And now, ngayong uh, present time, it also helps our modern-day scientists navigate the universe. O, di ba? Pati ang ating mga modern-day scientists, when they actually explore the sky or the universe, they're, they're also looking at the stars, the, the location, no, the exact uh, place where you see the stars. And they, this gives ideas kung nasa ang parte na sila sa universe or sa, sa sky, di ba? So that's how stars or how helpful the stars are, okay? Ayan, so sabi ni Yana Rain Ginado, nakakatulong po sa mga sailors, that is correct. Sabi ni Jan Vincent Santo Tomas, Opo Tutor! Sabi ni Ren Nati Cobar, sa gas po. Ayan. 
Sabi ni Eileen Merhesti Bayan, Aliana, hello po, Chuturgab, watching from Amade Elementary School, Grade 1, Arabica. Hello, Eileen. Ayan. So let's continue. So stars are huge celestial bodies made mostly of hydrogen and helium that produce light and heat from the churning nuclear forges inside their cores. Ayan. Aside from our sun, the dots of lights we see in the sky are all light years from Earth. Oh, di ba? So, alam natin na talaga naman tong stars talaga ito ay ano, napakalayo sa, sa Earth, no? At saka siya ay nagpo-produce siya ng light and heat. So, without our stars or without our sun, you know, Earth will be cold, no? Napakalamig and it will be dark. Okay? So, yun. So let us continue grade 3. They are the building blocks of galaxies, of which there are billions in the universe. It's impossible to know how many stars exist. So hindi natin alam talaga kung gaano kadami, no? Kasi when you look at the skies, there are really dots of stars there. Yan. But astronomers estimate that in our Milky Way galaxy alone, there are about... 300 billions. O, di ba? Ang dami-dami, no? Sa Milky Way Galaxy pa lang. Ito, nakita niyo dito sa screen natin. So, this is our Milky Way, no? So, dito pa lang, makikita na natin, there are already almost 300 billions, no? Ang dami-dami talagang stars. So, outside the Milky Way, meron pa. So, kaya... Sobrang dami talaga ng stars, no? We only see them parang that's some, but they are there, no? Napakadami nila. Okay. So, maybe you're wondering, paano ba nagkakaroon ng star, di ba? Kasi nakita na lang natin sila, ando na siya sa sky, eh, no? Pero paano ba sila, uh, how the star is actually born? Ayan. So, let us continue. The life cycle of star is spans billions of years. Ayan. So, ang isang buhay daw ng isang star class ay talaga namang billions of years. No? Hindi siya uh, years lang or hindi lang siya month or, or weeks. No? Talagang tumatagal yung stars ng maraming maraming taon. No? As a general rule, the more massive the star, the shorter its life span. So, you see? Mas malaki daw ang star, mas maikli lang ang kanyang buhay. So, diba? So, that's an interesting fact, no? So, we thought na mas malaki, mas mahabang buhay. But in a star, so, siya daw ay pag mas malaki, so, mas maikli lang ang kanyang buhay. Okay? Ayan. So, paano ba talaga nabubuhay or nabubuang isang star? Are you ready to find out? Here. So, birth takes place inside hydrogen-based dust clouds called nebulae, okay? Or nebula, no? Pag madami. So, if you're going to look here sa ating picture, grade 3, meron ka dito parang clouds, no? This is actually uh, in the sky or in the universe, no? And if you're going to look, ayan, so, siya ay parang uh, clouds na, we call these clouds as nebulae. At dito daw, nabubuo ang ating star. Over the course of thousands of years, gravity causes pockets of dense matter inside the nebula to collapse under their own weight. So dito sa nebula, so meron because of the gravity down, nagkakos daw ito ng ano, pockets of dense matter. So doon sa loob, dahil doon sa, sa gravity, no, unti-unti nakaka-create siya ng pockets. No? When you say pockets, like, di ba ang pockets parang bulsa siya? No? So nagka-create siya doon ng mga pockets of dense matter sa loob ng nebula. And one of these contracting masses of gas known as protostar, yan, represents a star's nascent phase. So, doon pala nagsisimula class, no? Sa nebula, yung ating star, no? Because of this contracting masses of gas, na ang tawag natin doon ay protostar, no? Yun yung pinakang 
kumbaga siya yung pinakang fetus no ng ng tao ng baby so ang tawag natin doon protostar so yun yung pinaka beginning ng star natin can you type in the comment section grade 3 the word protostar so yun kasi yung pinakang first stage ng life ng isang star can you type it sige nga i'm looking at the comment section so isulat nyo yung the word protostar so this is the star's nascent phase yun yung pinaka simula ng buhay ng ating star so because the dust in the nebulae obscures them protostars can be difficult for astronomers to detect Ayan, so very good si Christopher and your rings. Na type na yung protostar. Si Yana Rain Yunado. Ayan. So, yun. So, napakahirap daw para sa mga astronomers. Yung mga astronomers class, sila yung mga nag-study ng mga stars, no? So, hindi daw nila makita itong mga protostars na to. Kasi meron ng dust doon na nagko-cover eh. Nandun siya sa loob ng nebula. O, nag-type na rin si Ryan Matthew Cobar. Ayan. So, kaya ang mga astronomers natin, they're try, trying really hard to, to detect kung meron na bang uh, protostar or yung tinatawag natin na baby star doon sa nebula. No? Okay, so let us continue. So, nalaman nyo na yung term na nebula. So, yung nebula class or nebulae, pag madami na siya, ang tawag natin doon class ay... Uh, nebula is actually the hydrogen-based dust clouds. Okay, so yon Tapos, you also learned about the word protostar. So, yung protostar, yun yung star's nascent phase. Yung pinakang titus pa ng star. Okay, yung pinaka nabubuo pa lang yung star natin. Okay. Now, class, as a protostar gets smaller, so habang, oh, you see, habang lumilit daw yung protostar, it spins faster. Ayan. So, dito, eto siya, oh. So, habang lumiliit yung protostar natin, class, nag-spin siya ng mabilis, no? It spins faster because of the conservation of angular momentum. The same principle that causes a spinning ice skater to accelerate when she pulls in her arms. Ayan. So, di ba yung mga ice skater, pag sila, ginano nila yung kanilang arm, di ba? Because of their arm, so, they tend to spin na masabilis. So, ganun din class ang ating uh, protostar. So, siya ay nag-spin nag siya ng mabilis. At habang siya nag-spin, increasing pressure creates rising temperature. So, tumataas ang tumataas ang temperature habang nag-spin siya class ng mabilis. And a star enters what is known as the relatively brief T-Tory phase. Ayan. So, nandito na siya ngayon, class, sa, <clears throat> excuse me, sa second phase ng star, which is the T-Tory phase. Ayan. Can you type in your comment section the second uh, stage or the second phase of the life of star? Can you type it? The word T-Tory <clears throat> phase. Yun yung pangalawang stage ng ating star. So, yan, nandito siya, oh, nag-spin siya, grade 3, di ba? So, kanina kasi, yung first stage natin sa protostar, so, yung pangalawang stage ng star naman, we call it as the t tori phase. Thank you, Samara Sandigan de la Cruz. Ayan, na-type na niya yung t tori phase. Si Yana Rain Leonardo, na-type na rin niya. So, ayan, so, ito na yung pangalawang stage na ang ating star, yung T-Tory phase. Okay? Ayan. So, nag-time na rin si Jinji Well. Ayan. So, billions of years later, so habang tumatagal na class, when the core temperature climbs to about 27 million degrees Fahrenheit or 15 million degrees Celsius, nuclear fusion begins, igniting the core and setting off the next and longest stage of star's life, known as its main sequence. Ayan. So, andito na siya ngayon sa third uh, stage ng buhay ng star. At ang tawag na natin dito, class, ay main sequence. So, can you type in the comment section 
yung main sequence. Sige nga, can I see it? Main sequence, ha? tandaan nyo to. Itong star na to ay na millions of years na siya. Tapos yung kanyang temperature talagang nag-climb na siya sa 27 million degrees. So remember yung pag-spin niya, di ba? Uh, so, so, pag nag-create, pag nag-spin niya siya ng mabilis na mabilis, nagiging mataas na mataas ang temperature niya hanggang ma-reach siya yung 27 million degrees Fahrenheit or 15 million degrees Celsius. And it becomes so hot, no? Ayan, so na-type na nila ni Samara, ni Yana, ni Gingiwell, ni Ryan, main sequence. Very good. At alam niyo ba, class, ang main sequence star, stars are the most common type in the universe. So yung nakikita niyo na ngayon, class, ng mga stars, kagaya ng star or, or sun, that is actually in the main sequence stage na siya. No? Main sequence stars are stable. So stable na siya. They fuse hydrogen nuclei together to form helium nuclei releasing energy and emitting light. So nag-i-emit na siya ngayon ng light. Kaya yung nakikita natin na stars ngayon no, sa sky, actually nandun na sila sa third stage which is main sequence phase or the main sequence uh, stage. Okay? Ayan. So, napaka-interesting, di ba? So, most of the stars in our galaxy, including the sun, as I have said earlier, are categorized as main sequence stars. So, ang sun, main sequence star siya. They exist in a stable state of nuclear fusion, converting hydrogen to helium. So, yung hydrogen daw, nagiginis siyang helium, and radiating X-rays. So, nag-radiate na siya ng mga rays na X-rays. This process emits an enormous amount of energy, keeping the star hot and shining brightly. Ayan. So, ito daw ay, kaya daw, pag nandito ka na daw sa main sequence na, no? main sequence stage, no? yung daw process ng pag emit no? or yung pag radiate niya ng mga rays or helium, Yung daw yung nagkikip class star para maging hot siya, para maging shining siya, di ba? Kaya dun sa song, di ba? Twinkle, twinkle, little star. It twinkles, no? So, siya ay nasa main sequence stage na. Okay? Kasi stable na siya, no? Parang yung kanyang, ano, hindi na nawawala yung kanyang hotness, no? yung kanyang uh, being bright, no? So, nandun na siya class ngayon sa tinatawag natin na main sequence stage. Ayan! Very good! O, oh, ba So, last week. So, nalaman nyo na din itong ating mga terms na to. So, let me just refresh your memory. So, you know, already the star is an exploding ball of burning gas held together by gravity. Okay? So, we made mention about that. And also, you learned about the light here. Na pag sinabi natin light here, how far light can travel in one year? How far? It means the distance, no? Yung layo, di ba? Light travels at 186,000 miles each second, di ba? So that is what we call light year. Yun yung distance ng, uh, ng light, no? Kung gaano siya kabilis mag-travel in one year. Yan. And then you also learned about the Betelgeuse. Na? So the Betelgeuse, it is a reddish star that about 1,000 times bigger than the sun and more than 600 light years away. It is also the ninth brightest star in the night sky and second brightest in the constellation of Orion. Okay? So remember the word Orion. Orion is actually a constellation. At nalaman nyo din last week, when you talk about the constellation, it's actually a group of stars with recognizable patterns. So may pwede siyang grupo siya ng mga stars class na meron siyang uh, pattern or may itsura, no? So kagaya nga nitong Orion, no? Or yung mga Big Dipper, yung para siyang may malaking tabo, di ba? So yun. So, wait, merong makikita ka rin, di ba, na constellation sa star grade 3 na para siyang rosary, di ba? So, those are example of constellation. So, yung Betelgeuse, it's actually reddish star, 1,000 times bigger than the sun. Okay? 
And then, habitable zone. So, ano ulit yung habitable zone? So, when you talk about habitable zone, it's an area around the star that is approximately the right distance to support liquid water on the surface of a planet. So, remember that. So, di ba? Kapag siya ay habitable zone, yung layo mo dun sa star, pwede kang mabuhay doon. Kasi hindi siya masyadong mainit, hindi siya masyadong malamig, no? So, tama lang. So, hindi mo, hindi ma-freeze ang water kasi nasa habitable zone ka. Pwedeng materahan. Okay? Ayan. And then, Sirius naman is the brightest star in the night sky. It is also 500,000 times further from us than the sun. So, mas malayo siya ang Sirius, pero brightest siya. You can still see Sirius kahit 500,000 times na mas malayo sa sun. Diba? So, ang sun kasi, kita natin siya, diba? Kasi, tama lang kasi, nasa habitable zone kasi ang sun eh. So, pero ang Sirius, 500,000 times further. Mas malayo siya, no? Pero, can you imagine? Kita pa rin natin siya kasi Sirius is the brightest star. Okay? Now, Rigel. Rigel is a blue-white star in the constellation Orion. So, si Rigel, matatagpuan natin sa Orion, it is also one of the brightest stars in the night sky. Isa rin siya sa pinaka maliwanag na stars. Remember, it's 40,000, it is 40,000 brighter than our sun, but it is also 864 light years away. O, di ba? Layo-layo niya, no? 40,000 brighter ang liwanag na ng sun, pero siya, 40,000 brighter siya, and it's also 864 light years away. So, sobrang layo niya, di ba? So, sabi ni Reimer, watching from Pagadian, Pagadian City, Zamboanga del Sur, Santa Lucia Elementary School. Hi, Reimer, and Gingerwell, Daisy, Joel, Magbanwa, Rigel, ayan. So, you know already the definition of star. We keep on saying this. It's an exploding ball of burning gas held together by gravity. And you know that our sun is a star. It produces great amounts of energy in the form of light and heat that provide the perfect conditions for life on Earth. It's, habit it's in the habitable zone. Okay? How does a star work? So, kanina, nakita natin, di ba, sa beginning ng presentation is her, we use a star to navigate the, the sea, di ba? It helps our sailors, our uh, explorers, sea explorers to explore the sea, no? They are, when you look at the night, the dots that's like you see are stars. They are millions of miles away and billions of stars exist in the universe, but many are too far away from Earth to see even with the telescope, okay? Ayan. So stars are huge balls of burning gases, most of which are made of hydrogen. So di ba kanina? Pero pag nandun na siya sa main sequence stage, so siya ay natatransform na into helium, di ba? As the hydrogen gas in the star is squeezed due to gravity, it produces huge amounts of energy which make it glow. And the size, temperature, brightness, and colors of stars vary. Ayan. So, sabi ni Yana, stars help sailors navigate the sea. You're right, Yana. Okay. The color of a star is determined by its temperature. Yung kulay niya, dun mo makikita kung gano siya kainit, no? Red stars are cooler in temperature. Blue stars are hottest. And other stars like ours, which is the sun, which is yellow, are an in-between temperature. Okay? So remember. So stars come in different sizes and distances from Earth. So, di ba? Iba't ibang sizes, iba't iba yung layo. Kaya kanina, di ba? So nalaman nyo na yung Betelgeuse, di ba? Yung Rigel, yung Sirius. Talaga namang super layo nila, no? Stars are really far away from Earth. With a strong telescope, we can see stars that are millions of light years away. And a light travel in a light year is how far light can travel in one year. 
since light travels at 186,000 miles per second. It takes eight minutes for light from the sun to reach the earth. Can you imagine that grade three? Yun daw light ng sun ha, bago niya ma-reach ang earth, it will take only eight minutes. Ganon siya kabilis. Considering na ang layo-layo ng sun sa earth, pero ang bilis niyang matouch yung ating land, no? We, we can easily touch or we can see the light. Diba? When you wake up in the morning, when you, the sun rises, kita mo agad yung liwanag. Kasi in, in just eight minutes, nare-reach na nung sunlight ang ating earth. Ganun siya kabilis, no? Sabi ni Yana Rain Renado, pinaka, nainit ko ng star ay color blue at pinakamalamig po ang star na color red. Correct. Oh, you're learning a lot. The next closest star to Earth is the Proxima Centauri. Ayan. So remember the word Turi, no? Titori kanina. Titori face. I think ito yung uh, nag-i-spin siya na mabilis. Remember? So yun. Pero siya, yung isa sa pinakamalapit sa Earth, kasunod sa Sun, ha, is the Proxima Centauri, which is a little over four light years away from Earth. So four light years. That is... 250,000 times further away than the sun. <laughs> 250,000 times farther away than the sun. But, pero ang layo pa rin, di ba? Ayan. The brightest stars in the night sky is Sirius. So kanina, nasabi natin yun. Located 500,000 times further away than the sun. <clears throat> Excuse me. Sirius is also 20 times brighter than the sun which is why it is so easy to see at night. So in serious, madali mo siya makikita class kasi siya ay brightest star. Siya yung pinakamaliwanag. Okay? So do you see here? So this is serious. You see? It's like rotating too much light, no? Ayan. Proxima Centauri closest star to Earth po. Ayan. Very good. Sabi ni Yana. Ayan. So si Proxima Uh, Centauri siya ay yung uh, second, next, next closest, no? Next closest sa ating Earth. Okay. Our sun is a medium star of average size and brightness. Our star, the sun, is average in terms of size and brightness. However, our star is extraordinarily important. Napakahalaga ng sun. Earth is the perfect distance from the sun. So, tama lang yung layo natin talaga sa sun, no? The sun provides heat and light to our planet, supporting life on Earth. O, di ba? Earth is in the habitable zone of the sun. So, ang Earth daw ay nasa habitable zone sa sun, no? We are close enough, tama lang, sa sun to benefit from the light and heat, but far enough away to prevent Earth from being too hot and vaporizing all the water. So, yon. So, kita mo dito, super init niya. Meron pa siyang, ano, nag, parang lumalabas-labas pa yung apoy niya, di ba? So, we are so lucky kasi nasa habitable zone ang Earth. Kaya tayo nabubuhay dito sa Earth. Okay? The sun is much larger than the Earth. By comparison, if the sun were the size of a basketball, the Earth would be the size of a pencil point. Ayan. So, parang size, ang i-compare daw natin yung basketball para siyang, ano, para siyang ball, uh, ang sun, parang basketball, pero yung earth, para lang siyang tip ng pencil, yung pinakang tuldok lang ng pencil. It stars that are farther away appear smaller and dimmer. So, yung star na malayo, di ba? Akala mo, ang liit-liit na, di ba, Chino? Jaime Samonte, ayan. Sabi ni Chino and Jaime Samonte, Sir, habitable zone or gold deluxe zone. Okay. So, ano pa ang sabi dito? Siyempre, objects that are closer to you seem larger than objects that are farther away. So, tama naman, di ba? Pag mas malayo sa iyo ang isang bagay, para siyang uh, maliit. At pag mas malapit sa iyo, para siyang malaki. Sabi ni Ani, ah, it's okay, Ani, it's okay. If you're to light two candles, Hold one and have a friend hold the other on the opposite side of a room. And the candle you're holding would appear brighter and bigger. The same is true of stars. Ayan. So, kita nyo dito, 
So these two candles here are actually of the same size. Pero dahil siya mas malapit sa camera itong sun, mukhang mas malaki siya, no? Yung distant star na probably pwede sing size lang ni sun or mas malaki kay sun appears smaller because it's actually farther doon sa camera, no? So that's how it goes. Solar flares interfere with cell phone reception, satellites, and radio broadcasts. So yung solar flares, ito siya, oh. Ayan. So sometimes kasi may biglang dun sa ball, no? Dun sa sun. So talaga namang pag minsan may lumalabas-labas pa dun na parang apoy. We call it class at solar flare. We call it a solar flare. At yung solar flares can actually interfere with cell phone reception or satellites and radio uh, broadcast. Ayan. So as I have said earlier, stars were used for centuries. Ayan. To navigate the sea. So ang sabi ni Yana Rin din nando kapag po sobrang lapit ang sun at earth, maaari po masunog ang ating mundo at kapag sobrang layo po ng sun sa earth, sobrang lamig naman po sa earth at maaari pong mag-freeze ang tubig. Tama. Okay. Orion is the most recognized constellation. Ayan, si Orion, siya ay sa Greek mythology kasi. No? It was named after a hunter in Greek mythology. There are about 88 official constellations and each one has a different meaning based on your culture. Okay, so Orion is a constellation. Okay. So let's answer this again. Why should you never look directly at the sun? Anyone? Bakit daw hindi tayo dapat masyadong nakatingin sa sun? Can you write your answer? Bakit? Anyone? When you look directly at the sun, what will happen to you? Why should you never look? directly at the sun. So, bakit daw hindi tayo nagtumitingin sa sun? Dahil po masisira po yung mata. Tama, Ryan Matthew Cobar. It can damage your eyes. It is very bright. What are stars made out of? So, ano daw ang bumubuo sa ating stars? Di ba? May meron tayong vocabulary kanina. Yes, I'm looking at your comments. Si Gingiwell, si Yana, si Ani, si Gingiwell. Ayan. Anong bumubuo sa stars natin? Sabi ni Christopher, it can harm. So remember, we have three stages. We have the uh, protostar. Hydrogen po. Tama, Yana. Hydrogen and the other one is? Meron pang isa. Pag tumagal na siya dun sa ating tinatawag na Yung second ano, phase, nag spin na siya. Gas, hydrogen, yes, gingerwell. And also the helium, no? Kapag siya ay matagal na nag spin nag-turn na siya into uh, helium. Stars are gigantic balls of exploding gas held together by gravity. Okay, correct. And that gas is the hydrogen and the helium. I'm sorry. So what do stars produce? Yes, anong na produce ng star? Anyone? Remember, we need stars. So kasi sa earth, anong na produce ng stars? Light and heat, tama si Samara sa Gigan de la Cruz. Ayan. Produce light and heat. What is a light year and what is it used to measure? Tama kaya na? What is a light year and what is it used to measure? So ano daw ang light year? Sabi ni Ginger Liwanag at Init. Christopher, light heat, yes. Yana, light and heat, kanin yun. Liwanag at Init, Ginger Well. So what about light year? What is light year? Light and heat. So, ano yung light here, grade 3? Yes? Light at heat po. So, what about light year? Anyone? Ano natatanda nyo sa light year? What is it? 
You can type your answer in the comment section. A light here is... Yes. Can you type your answer? What is a light here and what is it used to measure? So, ano ang sinusukat daw ng light year? Serious na ba? Sino nakakatanda do sa light year? You forgot it? Okay, so here is the... I am waiting for your answer to appear in the comment section. A light year is the distance light travels in a year. So distance siya na natatravel ng light in one year. So sabi ni Christopher, measure the distance of the... Correct, Christopher. Ayan. So since light can travel at 186,000 miles per second, it can travel very far in one year. Okay. Light years are used to measure very large distances in space, such as distances between stars. So ginagamit ang light years para i-measure daw yung layo ng bawat star sa isa't isa. So Kylie, distance po. Okay, correct. How long does it take sunlight to travel to the Earth? Gano daw katagal bago daw makarating yung sunlight sa Earth? Gano katagal? Anyone? Yes, grade 3. Gano katagal? How long does it take sunlight to travel to the Earth? Come on, guys. Can you type your answer? How long does it take sunlight to travel? Gano ba katagal bago makarating? 8 minutes. Correct, Christopher. Yay! Sunlight travels 93 million miles from the sun to the earth in about 8 minutes. You're the first Christopher Elurim. Very good. Ayan. So why did Zoe's candle appear brighter than Isis' candle even though they are the same size? So bakit daw yung candle ni Zoe ay marang, parang mas maliwanag kesa dun sa candle ni Izzy kahit daw sila ay pareho ng size? Bakit? Pareho sila ng size, pero bakit daw mukhang mas maliwanag yung candle ni Zoe kesa sa candle ni Izzy? Anong dahilan nun? Anyone, grade 3? Yes? Because of the? Mas malapit siya sa camera. Correct, Ginger Well. Dahil po malapit po kasi yung isa tama, Ryan, no? So the correct answer is Zoe and Isa's candles are the same size but Zoe's candle is much closer to the camera than Isa's so it appears larger and brighter. Why does Dr. Jeff's large flame appear to be the same size as Isa's even though it was larger? So bakit daw naman yung kay Dr. Jeff na flame yung apoy sa candle niya, ay parang mas, uh, parang pareho sila ng size, kahit ito daw ay mas malaki. Bakit? Why does Dr. Jeff's large flame appear to be the same size? Bakit parang pareho? Ayun, sabi ni Sunny, mas malapit. Or magkaiba yung kanilang ano? Distance again doon sa ating camera. Yay! Very good, grade 3. So when Dr. Jet moves his large flame far away from the camera, it appears to be the same size as Isis' flame, which is much closer. Ayan! So yon. what do you think might happen to Earth's water if it were closer to the sun or further away? So, ano daw mangyari naman sa Earth's water kapag daw mas masyado tayo malapit sa sun o di kaya naman daw ay mas malayo tayo doon. So, what will happen to the water? So, pag masyado tayong malapit sa sun, what will happen to the water? Yes, grade 3? Pag mas malapit yung sun sa Earth, what will happen to our water? The water in the sea, the water in the lake, the water in... Yes? Anyone? Matutuyo po, sabi ni Yana Reynado, and you are correct. Diba? It will dry 
up or it will evaporate, di ba? So yun, so mawawalan tayo ng maiinom. And then, you know, we will die also because of too much heat and too much uh, brightness. Become warmer, much warmer, sabi ni Christopher. Correct, no? Ayan, Earth's distance from the sun puts it in a perfect position to support life. And life as we know it needs liquid water. If Earth were closer to the sun, our water might dry up. If Earth were further from the sun, our water might freeze. O, di ba? So, yung pag masyado malayo naman, mag-freeze naman yung ating water. Okay? Ayan. So, again, ang ating reference dito ay www.generationgenius.com solar system for kids. Yeah. So, thank you so much, grade 3. Finally! So, natapos na tayo sa ating... Um, four quarters sa Science 3. And I hope, greatly you had fun learning with Tutor Gab. Ako, tuwang-tuwa ako sa inyong lahat. Hindi ko na kayo iisa-isahin, no? Pero may mga common kasi class na mga pangalan ko nakikita dyan. Na, hindi ko na sasabihin pa kasi baka yung iba magtampo, hindi ko ma-mention. Pero grade 3, thank you so much for your time. Salamat sa inyong mga magulang who have been very supportive of you. Gusto ko talaga na uh, kahit hindi na kayo, for example, tapos na itong fourth quarter, do not stop learning. No? Kahit naman solo lang kayo, pwede kayo mag-study. You are so lucky kasi meron na tayong um, internet, pwede kayo mag-browse no, ng mga educational. No? You have YouTube to watch na marami kayong matututunan. So, do not stop learning, Great Day. Thank you so much. I love you all and see you next school year. Goodbye sa inyong lahat at maraming maraming salamat. Goodbye, grade 3. I will miss you. Goodbye, everyone. Sigurado ako na marami ka na namang natutuhan sa ating itulay tutorial session ngayong araw. Tandaan, ito ay hindi lamang para sa ating mga mag-aaral, kundi pati rin sa ating mga minamahal na guro at mga magulang na kaagapay natin para maituloy ang pagkatuto sa kabila ng nararanasang pandemya. Patuloy ding sumubaybay sa DepEd TV para sa mga araling ginawang video episodes. Mapapanood ito mula lunes hanggang sabado, alas 7 ng umaga hanggang alas 7 ng gabi sa inyong mga telebisyon. Abangan bukas mula alauna ng tanghali ang iba pang aralin sa ating e life free online tutorial session sa English. I-like and subscribe at manatiling nakasubaybay sa ating e life tutorial session sa DepEd EdTech Unit FB page at Educational Technology Unit channel sa YouTube at sa DepEd Tayo at DepEd Philippines social media accounts. Paalam!